Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm on the Mediterranean coast of Spain near Valencia. Today we are going to Albufera, which is a freshwater lagoon and the area where they grow rice for paella. We are going to learn and we're going to tour the rice production, the paddy fields. And then Paco Alonso from Wiki Paella, who is the king of paella, he is going to take us to meet Chef Raul, who is a, literally, he's a world champion paella maker. They are going to make what is one of the greatest paellas. That crackle, that bubble, all the ingredients emerging. So stay tuned for this entire rice tour, history, and an amazing paella, all coming up in this video right now. Where are we at? Where are we starting today? We are in the best molin of rice. Oh, so this is where they produce it. Production. Two generations. Valencian the, the rice, local rice, rice and, in Albuquerque. And he buys the best producers and he commercializes. And the best varieties of Jota Sendra, Albufera, Bomba, and Senia. There's the local varieties of rice, Valencian rice. We're beginning today at the rice mill where he buys rice from around grown right in this area, the best quality Valencian rice you can get and brands it, mills it, distributes it to the best paella makers in Spain and the world. Yes. This is the mountain of rice, but he said there, this is very low right now. Normally this entire warehouse would be full of mountains of rice, but these are some of the local varieties. Oh man, I love rice. Round rice, Around. special for paella. Special for paella. What variety is this? This is Jota Sendra. Ah, it's there? Yes, yes, yes. Wow. In September, it normally goes all the way to the roof. Veis, estos tubos llenan aquí, para aquí, y luego esos tubos llenan hasta el final. They come pouring out of these tubes. Oh, okay. This is the only grain right now, rice, that would be used for paella, the round grain. The other one is more of a long grain. Oh yeah, you can see it really is kind of oval in shape. This is the paella mountain right here. Okay, I'm gonna try a snow angel into the rice pile. And it's impermeable, so there's no damage done to the rice. Yes. No damage done to the rice? Impossible. What about damage done to me? Yes, severe damage. Here we, oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah, wait. <laughs> they got your head. No, no, we got, got it. We got it. No. Angel. Oh, that's actually extremely comfortable. No, no, stay on the skin Oh, I can Angel? take a nap right here. Angel? I'll come back after we eat the paella to take a nap on top of the rice. <laughs> Do, the uh, Do the angel. Do the angel. Oh, it's like, oh, it permanently just holds your shape. <laughs> Twelve thousand people comes every weekend. It here, it's it, it's impressive. Wow! It's impressive. It's fabulous. Only have seven hundred persons and thirty-two restaurants. It's amazing. They have the right priority. Oh, <laughs> I think so. Paella, uh, arroz a banda, ah. allí pebre. And, and many things, all the traditional dishes in Valencia made and cooked here, here. in the Bob. We are in El Palmar, and this is on the banks of the Alpu Albufera Lake, which is a freshwater lake, uh, but it's more of a lagoon with a bit of salinity, I believe. This village is surrounded by rice paddy fields. There are 700 inhabitants, and yet there are 32 restaurants, many of which serve paella. We're gonna take a boat, and then after that, we'll return to Bon Aire restaurant where we are gonna, uh, Chef Raul, who has won competitions for his paella, he's gonna demonstrate, we're gonna see the entire process of a paella all the way from the start to the finish before we eat. New boat. Beautiful. Spacious. Excuse me, man. 
Ah, it's very one shallow. meter and a half very shallow. Uh, deeper. It's no, it's no deeper. It's no deeper. Albufera is a national park now and a lot of people come here for boat rides to see the natural scenery, also to see the wetlands and to see to birdwatch actually. But what's important about Albufera in our case of Paella is that it's a lake which used to be a more of a salt lake but it's the salinity has changed to become fresh water now. But this is the lake that feeds the water for the rice paddy fields. And so when it was cultivated, and especially the art of growing rice was cultivated by Middle Eastern Arabs and Moors, this is the area that they chose because of the wetlands, the heat, the, I mean, the, it's the correct atmosphere and environment for growing rice. It's an incredible glimpse into the land of Paella. Now we're on our way to go meet Chef Raoul. Muy bien, muy bien. Mark. Raoul. Chef Raoul. Yes. Muy bien, es que ahí tenéis mi, mi pueblo, mi casa, su casa también. Yes, fabulous. ¿Ves? La raya blanca. Es una raya blanca completamente blanca. Y el arroz, esto no es, esto es mala hierba. Just a quick explanation about the weeds growing on the side as well as, I mean, and the, the rice. Actually, that's actually good rice. This location, this setting could not be more perfect. Umbrellas, the paella pan is over here. We're surrounded by rice paddy fields. And back there, this is the town. Bon Aire restaurant is right there where the chef is from, the owner, who is going to prepare the paella right here in front of us. It's truly a beautiful place. And even though the sun is pretty blazing hot and direct, when the breeze when you're under the umbrella, you have the shade and then the, the natural breeze coming off the paddy fields is cool. And the rabbit, the rabbit, the chicken, all the ingredients are set out on the table now. Name of the rice is Che. che. It's, it's our um, expression, typical expression, Valencian expression. Uh, and what? Che. What? Uh, what's up? Oh, okay. Che. 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 And what, what type of rice will be used today? What variety? Che. Sendra. Sendra. Jota Sendra. Jota yes, Sendra. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the varieties of the Valencian varieties. All right. And begin with olive oil. Este es pollo y a la otra parte conejo. Oh. Pollo y conejo. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, mira, la paella. The paella is underway. Chef starts with olive oil, a sprinkle of salt, turns on the fire, and then adds in the chicken first. That's crackling away with that salt. And you really want to, you really, I mean, like with all paellas I've seen that they've really browned out the chicken, really fried it so it's crispy on the skin. And that also releases some of that chicken fat to flavor the entire paella. This is paella, Paco. Hey, hey. Yes. Yeah. Browning the chicken. I'm going in for a chicken flip. <laughs> oh, that, that sizzling is so satisfying. Yeah, it's just all the chicken fat coming out. Browning. Oh yeah, that crust. Y, y me dice, 
La. So he really fries that chicken until golden crispy on the skin. And then he added in the rabbit. Oh, wow. Sí, allí no estará los chavales. El primer camarero que vea será yo. Claro que puede comer pollo, toma. Un buen pollo. Que le pongo un poquito de sal, ¿vale? No quiero que la verdura se me queme. Entonces, de paso, voy a soltar estos jugos de aquí. Y con eso. Este es manteca. Sí, pero. Esto es grasa de pato. Nosotros hacemos pato confitado y esto es lo que le va a dar uso menos aceite mucho no es increíble mm -hmm. <risa> tomate ok Esto es pimentón, pimentón dulce. So a lot of steps just happened. That is like one of the most crucial steps in a paella is getting all those steps correct and those ingredients in order because I think it really is a strategy and it's a it's an order that makes a difference. So now water goes in, and that's gonna create a stock from that deglazed chicken and rabbit, as well as the pimento and the, the few other spices in there. Snails go in. Gracias. Cómelo. Cómelo. Okay. Hey. Mm. Oh, man. That is so sweet and juicy. Muy dulce. Yeah. Muy dulce. And crispy. Sweet and crispy. Delicious. Oh, that is garden fresh. Hey, here comes the saffron. Un poquito de saffron, ¿vale? Okay. ¿Ves cómo va a estar amarillo? Just a little bit of saffron, but that's going to go a long ways. It's so aromatic, and that's going to give it even more of its golden color, mixed with that pimento, which is the, the powdered chili. And then he cranks up that fire. It has like a ring of fire that goes all the way around, and it's just crackling. It's volcanic bubbling. Okay. Gracias. So this is the final chance that you have to taste the salt and taste the the ingredients before the rice goes in. Oh. Good. It's so good. The flavor of the chicken. Oh man, the fragrance, the sweetness of the green beans and the garrafo. It's all in there. As the paella continues to brew, continues to cook, we're starting on some appetizers. El pescado se llama gisa. Nosotros lo llamamos gisa. Mullet es en francés. Mullet. Oh, mullet. 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 Es un vegetarian fish. Vale, con permiso. Mullet. El allipé. Ah, el allipé. El guiso de anguila. Por aquí. Faltará más tarde. Algo más de bebida. No, estamos perfectos. This is like a studio. Vino. This one is allipé bread and it's in, in a, with potatoes and, and chili as well. And it's very typical in, in the area of El Palmar. And this one is uh, tomato with, uh, Atum. Tuna, uh, with tuna, but uh, ventresca, Paco? Concedio. Ventresca, it's a... Um... Try a piece of the fried eel. Mm. Oh. oh, wow, it's fatty and juicy and crispy on the outside. Oh, it's so good. And eel is a specialty here as well. Mm. Mm. So good. Thank you. Put your arm um, sure. uh, uh, on the here on top. Thank you. Okay. Taste it. Thank you very much. Mm. I'm gonna try some of this studio as well. No. I think I 
But I like Thai rucks. Tomato dip that Paco says is one of his favorites. Mm. Oh wow. There's pine nuts in that. There's definitely green chilies. The acidity and sweetness of the tomato. Mm. And now we gotta have a tomato. Mm. Mm. Fresh juicy tomato topped with tuna. This is some type of a uh, fish. Olive oil, onions, tomatoes, peppers in here. Mm. Man. Everything delicious. So much flavor. Fresh. Yeah. This is at the source of seafood, rice, and eels. That's incredible. That's incredible. That's incredible. That's for you. Gracias, Paco. Gracias. To wrap it all together. And one of the rules about a traditional Valencian paella is that you're not really permitted to use a pre-made stock or to make a separate stock. The stock for the rice must be made all within one pan, and that's looking spectacular. So we're going to be using the rare, the rare albufera, which is yeah, it's extremely rare. You would not even find it at a restaurant because there's just not enough supply of it. But we are getting lucky here to have an, a paella made with the albufera rice. And I better not drop this or ruin the paella. The prize, albufera. Yeah, it's almost like Japanese rice. Time to get serious, it's rice time. The rice is in and it's so important that it uh, is spread out evenly throughout the paella pan so that it cooks evenly, so that it cooks at the perfect uh, wellness. And this is really where part of the strategy, part of the skills of making paella come in because you have to make sure it doesn't clump, you have to make sure that it cooks the right way, not overcooked, and also ensuring that you get some crust on the bottom. Oh, this is where the experience really matters. Ah, I see. We're approaching the end of the paella when the liquid is drying out, it's dehydrating. And I love this stage because at first it looks like a pool of broth and the ingredients are all floating around, the rice is somewhere in there. Then slowly starts to emerge all of the toppings, the beans, the green beans, the chicken, the rabbit, the snails start to poke their heads out. It's like a mud flat that starts to get dehydrated, baked in the sun and just crack and all the ingredients start to emerge. So we're at the final stages. You have to really listen to it. That crackle, that bubble, all the ingredients emerging. And the final step is the socorat. That's when it caramelizes on the bottom. You usually crank up the heat or the fire to caramelize the edge on yeah. the bottom, one of the prized parts of the paella. For the oil goes down and repeat the action, put the fire and makes the soccer. Is this oh. the Oliva? Come on. Paco, no te caes. No, no me santo. The cooking process is done. That was so incredible. And again, Chef Raul, he is a master. He's won competitions. He's an award winner for his paella. We are walking back to the village, to a table somewhere, to eat. Yo puedo comer el tuyo. Es un invento genial. Es un invento genial. Porque no necesitas esos platos que se ponían antiguamente, ¿no? Antiguamente poníamos un cartón de huevo. We are at Bon Aire restaurant and they have seats all set up along the canal facing the rice paddy fields. It's a beautiful environment. This is where we're going to eat. The paella is ready. It looks spectacular. Wait a minute. Rest. Wait a minute, please. Oh, Wait patience. A minute. Five minutes. Patience. Five minutes. The rice must the rest. Rest must rest. Yes. It's absolute, absolutely necessary. Then Paco, can we quickly go over some of that eating etiquette? So you eat paella from the, the pan yeah, from using the pan. a wooden spoon. 
with a spoon. And everybody sticks to their own slice of the uh, paella? Yes, we have our portion, like you are playing to the trivial pussy. <laughs> where, are the, where are the lines drawn on the paella? Is that by, mm. that's just the honor system, the honor system. The Valencians, um, <laughs> them, um, envelope, um, the, it's you can a, envision your slice, yes. your triangle of it's the like paella. Pizza. It is. Yes. It's like a pizza like with a your own, pizza. Yes. with your with your slice, Good. your Good. triangular slice. Yeah. So we're about to go in. It Going in. That here, mouth. Oh. Award-winning so paella. There's a cocolon siding. There's a socarrat siding. Mm. Oh. Oh wow. Fine. Good. Mm -hmm. Good, really good. Mm. Oh. It is so much flavor. All absorbed into the rice. Mm. The albufera rice is so, it really does absorb everything. The tomato, the pimento, mm. the sweetness of the string beans. Oh. Oh, that is, that's straight comfort food. Warm and comforting. Mm. What's your favorite so far? Love the beans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. The butter beans are so starchy and hearty. And this is the first time we've had a lot of snails. Mm hmm. They were generous with the snails. Stingy with the snails. Mm. Mm. Shows your sector by the snails. Mm. Oh, did I get them all? <laughs> no. I the texture. The texture is like perfect. Okay, I'm going for a piece of chicken next. That chicken was, was the most beautifully fried chicken in all of Paella history. And again, when he made this chicken, he totally fried it out. A golden, almost red in color in that olive oil. I mean, all of the fat comes out into the rice. That's what's in the rice. That's what's flavoring it, empowering it. Um, and then it reabsorbs in that broth and then re-dehydrates again. It goes from wet to dry, dry to wet, dry again. Oh, wow. Mm. That's the chicken is amazing. It's so incredibly moist without being like dried out at all. These extra fresh butter beans. The gara, the garafo. Mm. They're so sweet, so starchy. Add so much protein to the paella. And then we've got a snail next. Snail is also one of the, the best bites in the paella. Oh man, the, the snail is so juicy. Mm. Well, the snails are one of the best parts. They're so sweet. And again, it's like a cup that just absorbs all of that soup as it boils. In Valencia. Yeah. Not that far, Yeah. And then again, one of the best parts is where you scrape up the bottom. That's so The chicken fat is all melting together on that high fire finish. That's what creates that caramelization, that crust, that crispiness. Mm. Oh, and that just magnifies the flavor. And how can you beat eating paella with a wooden spoon? Mm. More of that incredibly delicious moist chicken. I can't believe how moist the chicken is without being overcooked, even though it boils for a long time. That's incredible. So you can eat the snail, chase with the soup in the, in the shell. Mm. 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 
and after we finished the paella, we've just been sitting, sitting back, relaxing. There's nothing quite like the Spanish relax session at the end of a meal. You can sit here for hours. There's even a name for it. Siesta. But what is the relaxing? Siesta. What about after the meal? After the meal, when you just sit and that is sobremesa. Sobremesa. Yes, it's the sobremesa time. But uh, when we sleep, is siesta. 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 The, siesta the after moon. The after after meal relaxation in Spain. They have it down to a science. We're having coffee. We're eating peanuts. Salud. Yeah. Uh, it's just immobile after a meal. Oh, that was absolutely delicious. So satisfying, so flavorful, so just natural tasting and just the flavor of the chicken, the flavor of the snails. I mean, this is the, the capital of paella, Valencian paella, and so this was really special. Highly recommended when you come to Valencia, it's an absolute must to visit this little village for the amazing paella and the rice cultivation. But also, yesterday it was, there's another full video about an ultimate tour of Valencia paella tour. So you should definitely check that out where we had a totally different paella experience and I'll have that linked in the description box below as well. And I want to say a huge thank you, especially to Paco Alonso from Wikipaia for organizing this, for setting it up for us. <sighs> what another just incredible day eating paella in Valencia. And big thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. Goodbye from Albufera, Valencia. I'll see you on the next video.